What's up, Pro Wrestling World? It's your boy JB giving you my match predictions on WWE's Bad Blood in Atlanta, Georgia. This coming up Saturday. If you guys get a chance, check out my um, Bash in Berlin um, match predictions and results in my video library on my channel. If you're interested in the com uh, content, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's free, guys. I hope you like it, and I want you to give me feedback in case, um, you know, what, what you like, what you don't like, and what you like me to talk about. So if you get a chance to watch my Bash of Berlin match predictions and results uh, video, you'll see I was spot on. <laughs> I was spot on on a lot of things that are shaping up in the WWE. So let's get down this card, shall we? So let's start with the Drew McIntyre CM Punk Blood Feud Hell in a Cell match. They're both one and one. Their SummerSlam match was a little underwhelming. I was wrong on my prediction that Drew would win at Bash in Berlin. CM Punk won the scrap match. He hit the four corners. And then that was that epic, vicious beatdown. When uh, CM Punk was going to challenge, he said, I want to challenge Gunther. And CM Punk came out there, man, and beat the crap out of him, stuffed the beads in his mouth, just tried to beat him to a pulp. Um, this is probably... Next to Hangman Page and uh, Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland, this is the best blood feud in all of wrestling. Tied with Hangman and Swerve at AEW. I mean, it kind of fizzed out at the end, but then they had a really good go-home promo. So it's definitely time to end this feud at Bad Blood, and it's definitely Bad Blood. I'm not saying it should be at the violence of Hangman and um, Swerve, because that was just next level. Because WWE is a little bit more, you know, toned down as far as the violence. But it's definitely got to be some blade jobs. There needs to be some bleeding. There needs to be some violence. And I predict CM Punk going up 2-1 on Drew McIntyre. Um, and then after that, CM Punk will challenge Gunther at either Crown Jewel or Survivor Series for the World Championship. Uh, what's next for Drew McIntyre? Whew. Gunther ain't losing the belt for a while. He's a heel. Gunther's a heel. You almost got to put... I mean, I know some people have been saying it online, but you almost got to put Drew McIntyre on SmackDown. Now, Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, would be a damn good feud for Cody because Drew is the ultimate heel. So you almost probably got to send Drew to SmackDown. I mean, there's really going to be nothing else for him to do on Raw. I mean, he didn't already feud it with Seth Rollins. Um, does he feud with Braun Breaker and put him over? I don't know. But it's really nothing else for Drew McIntyre to do on Monday Night Raw. Next, you have the WWE Women's Championship match of Bayley versus Nia Jax, which is a rematch from SummerSlam. We all know, and I had predicted this. I predicted right at SummerSlam. Um... <laughs> Bailey was a deserving champion. She was unselfish for two years. She helped build damage control that built up Dakota Kai and EO Sky on the main roster because EO Sky and Dakota Kai were super popular stars in NXT. But Bailey kind of helped them elevate on the main roster. She took a step back, let a lot of people shine. But when she, by the time she came champion, I think what hurt Bailey. Triple H didn't do her any favors by sending damage control immediately to Raw after WrestleMania. Because you could have literally had, I mean, EO didn't even ask for a damn rematch. I lose the match at WrestleMania and I go to Raw. EO don't get no rematch. So you could have did an EO rematch with Bailey, and then you could have had a Dakota Kai match with Bailey. You could have had an Oscar match with Bailey. You could have had a Kyrie Sane match with Bailey before that feud end. The damage control feud that ended up being a betrayal and kicking Bailey out of the faction she created was one of the best segments on SmackDown. It was probably one of the greatest segments of the year for the women. Next to Liv and Rhea, and Triple H pulled the plug on it too quick. I mean, it was so good because the bloodlines, you had the bloodline for the men, and then you had the damage control betrayals going on for the women. And Triple H just yanks the plug out. Bailey got to start her title reign with a bunch of women. 
that she really didn't have a lot of history with. Then she went, they did this weird baby face match with Naomi. They both baby faces wrestling like, oh, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. That's why I don't like two baby faces wrestling. Like, come on. So Bailey's four month reign was boring as shit. And Triple H had to pull the plug. He did not do Bailey any favors. Bailey looked weak in all of her promos leading up to all of her championship matches defenses. And she just looked weak. She was didn't get a lot of TV time. I don't know. They did some weird with Bailey's booking, man. But they, they yanked the belt off Bailey, gave it to Nia Jax, who was deserving. Nia Jax was deserving, despite how you feel about Nia Jax. This second run has been great. Queen of the Ring champion, deserve it all. Okay. Nia Jax went in his match. Now, I think it's too early to pull the plug on Nia Jax's reign. I think it's too soon to give Tiffany Stratton the cash-in match and her being WWE champion, women's champion. It's too soon for all of that. But there needs to be a hellified tease. There needs to be a hellified tease of Tiffany getting fed up with Nia's disrespect and her vicious verbal abuse and physical abuse too. She choked Tiffany. What the hell? So I think Nia retains, then she does something a little disrespectful towards Tiffany, and Tiffany maybe raises her hand about to hit her. Something needs to happen at the end of that match. But Bailey should not be winning that match. Only reason why Bailey should be winning that match is for Tiffany to cash in, and Tiffany's not quite ready to be champion yet. She's championship material. It's a little too soon. I would like for her to cash it in. I would like for Tiffany to win the championship at WrestleMania or Royal Rumble next year. Too soon right now, though. But that's the only way Bailey's winning is if Tiffany's for the cash in. And Nia's only been champion since SummerSlam. So let her have a title reign a little longer than that. Nia's been all right, okay? For Nia Jax, um, she already beat uh, Mee Chin. She's going to beat Bailey. Maybe she starts a feud with either... I mean, I guess she starts a feud with Naomi. Um, It's got to be one of the big three. It's gonna, I mean, <laughs> who else is on SmackDown? It's going to have to be Bailey. I mean, it's going to have to be um, Naomi. It's going to have to be Jay Cargill or Bianca Belair. That's going to have to be her next feud. So the next match on the card is a extreme blood feud between Damian Priest and Finn Balor. I had predicted um, that Damian would, Priest would lose to Gunther at SummerSlam. I predicted on my Bash in Berlin video that the Terra Twins will win because that's going to set up the match that we're going to watch Saturday night. You didn't want to have Judgment Day winning that match because it would have had no steam and no heat for them, for Finn to challenge Damien. Because it's like, I already beat y'all. You know? That's what they, uh, that's what Phil would be like. Like, I already beat y'all. Like, why do I want to match with you? So this causes... Damian Priest, I mean, this is cause this caused Finn Balor to open up why he betrayed Damian, and then they have the match Saturday. I think Damian Priest wins because Finn has been kicking Damian's ass for the last couple of weeks. Coup de gras about six of them, beating the shit out of Damian Priest. So that means usually typical WWE formula booking that when somebody's getting their ass whooped leading up to the pay-per-view the other person wins triple h can you switch it up a little bit i get my ass kicked leading up to the ple but then i win the match at the ple like come on man mix the shit up a little bit triple h i get tired of seeing that man like like cody rose i get my ass kicked for fucking oh excuse me for freaking five weeks I got no shot at winning, and then I find a way to win at a PLE. Switch the shit up. This predictable ass formula. Switch it up, Triple H, please. Damn, I'm sorry. Forgive all the cussing. I'm, I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. But Damian Priest is retaining because, and I'm gonna predict it later. It's gonna be a one for one. Between the Terror Tens and the Judgment Day. What's next for Damian Priest? What's next for Finn Balor? 
Finn Balor, how about you defend your tag team championship? You got the belt for over 100 days with one damn title defense. So run off with J.D. McNuggets and start defending that damn tag team championship. But all in all, I'm joking around, but I'm kind of serious. Finn Balor, I, I like to see him more in a singles competition. Finn Balor is one of the greats now. Don't let this sideshow character and this upper mid-card character fool you about Finn Balor. This is just this part of the time of his career. But Finn Balor was a main eventer, so let's not lose sight of that. What's next for Damian Priest? How about Damian Priest ask Gunther for a rematch? I mean, I know people may not want to see that, but whatever happened to champions that lose the belt getting a damn rematch? Io, no rematch. Damian, no rematch. Rhea got a rematch. She's about to get another rematch. Bailey's getting a rematch. Like, what the hell is going on with these people not getting a chance, these challengers not getting a rematch after they lost the title? So Damian Priest, I mean, just continue to work his way on the um the upper mid card. I mean the upper the, the top card. I mean Damian's turned himself into a main event guy. If Drew McIntyre hangs around, maybe they get in the feud. I mean, Damian's kinda out there too. Does he challenge Gunther? He's gotta challenge some heels because he's a babyface. Or since this is the first match between Damian and Finn, you can have a two or three match feud. Until we can start to get, you know. But at the same time, Finn needs to be defending his tag titles. The next match on the card is for the Women's World Championship uh, between Liv Morgan, who's the champion, against Rhea Ripley. This feud has been one of the great feuds of the year, but it's time to end it. It's very, it's getting very stale. It's getting very boring. Um, I knew that the Terra Twins was going to win. That means, hey, Rhea... I got a win over you, Liv. Now give me my title shot again after I lost that Wrestle uh, SummerSlam. So Rhea out here getting rematches. But my criticism of Triple H, the booking of the women's division has not been great. It's been very inconsistent. Liv and Rhea have been carrying the show, but you got to branch them out. When Rhea loses this match, that's my prediction, against Liv Morgan. She needs to, she's needs to. she been kind of selling her knee. Maybe she goes out again on the injury angle, takes a little hiatus, and then come back at Royal Rumble. Or if you keep her around, she has to get in a feud with maybe a returning Raquel Rodriguez. She's already a baby face, so what other heel is on Raw, Triple H? What other main heel is on Raw other than Liv Morgan? The pure foolish collective? The pure Foolish Collective. I mean, I'm sorry. The Pur Fusion Collective. Shoot your shot. Let's have... <laughs> Let's have Rhea Ripley go up against Zoe Stark. Let's have Rhea Ripley go up against Shayna Baszler. Let's have Rhea Ripley... <laughs> Go up against Sawyer Deville. Like, what are we? <laughs> Look, I like Sawyer Deville. I like Shayna Baszler. I like Zoe Stark individually, but the pure foolish collective, pure foolishness collective. Like, no. You got to build up, I mean, I guess Triple H is trying to build these women up as like these big heels, but they got no aura, man. Rhea has to fight big heels, and they're not nowhere close. There's some mid-carding heels that's jobbing. They're a jobbing faction. So I think Rhea needs to take a small break, maybe to Survivor Series or maybe to... Uh, WWE, the the Saturday Night Heat or whatever it is, or wrestle or Day One Raw next year, because I'm saying this because live. There's enough baby faces for live to have. Like this match, this whole feud is about a damn love triangle. It ain't even about the fact that Liv is a damn champion. Can we see the champion Liv Morgan? You got baby faces out there. You got Lara Valkyria, even though she's getting fed to the pure foolish collective. You got 
Liv Morgan out there. Uh, you, I mean, I'm sorry. You got Lara Valkyrie out there. You got EO Sky out there. You got Kyrie Sane out there. But you got Kyrie Sane and EO in this tag team mess. They need to be singles competitors. Maybe, I mean, maybe they want to be tag teams. To be ta- I don't think they have been tag team champions together in WWE. So maybe that's a cool thing that they want to do. But they're both, they need to stand alone. This is EO Sky. This is Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane has been having some dark matches against Liv Morgan. But you can easily put them in few. Selena Vega, Lyra Valkyria, Kyrie Sane, Eo Sky. I want to see Liv battling them, defending her belt against them. I'm tired of the real Ripley stuff. I don't want to see that to WrestleMania next year. I don't want to see it anymore after Bad Blood. Okay, please, Triple H. Build up some damn heels on Raw and not the pure foolish collective. And continue to build the baby faces on Raw. So Liv can have some people to fight. The last match on the card is the main event of the tag teams of the unlikely pair of Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns against Jacob Fatu and Solo Sikoa, the new bloodline. I'm not a fan of this tag team. I, I feel like it should be a little bit more of a struggle. I mean, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns have been battling for two years. And practically in one segment, they agree to tag team. Like, that's the lamest, laziest booking nearly of all time. Like, come two years of battling, one segment, y'all are convinced y'all need to wrestle together to take down a bloodline? Like, what the? F- who's going to take a pin? That's how you know who's going to win this match. You know, damn well, Roman Reigns ain't finna take no pin. You know, damn well, Cody Rhodes ain't finna take no pin. You know, damn well, Jacob Fatu, who is your next future starter, they're trying to push to the moon. And I love it because I like Jacob Fatu, is not about to take no damn pin. So who finna take a pin? I already named three out of the four. Solo mother. Sokoa finna take a damn pin Saturday night. It's gonna either, I don't care if it's Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes, one of them gonna pin solo. And that's what it is. Predictable ass booking by Triple H. So since it's being the main event, it's definitely gonna be a return. Whether it's Paul Heyman, whether it's Jimmy Uso, whether it's another Bloodline member, whether it's The Rock, somebody is coming back. Or there's gonna be a betrayal. Between, you know, and this is why I predict that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are going to win with probably Cody Rhodes pinning Solo Sokoa for the 20th time. He needs to end this feud and this stuff going on with the bloodline and it's going to set up a heel turn of Kevin Owens or Randy Orton. Think about this. We know what Roman Reigns has terrorized Randy Orton and Kevin Owens on SmackDown. Terrorized him for years, right? There was a promo cut on with Solo, which was pretty cool. He says, Cody, you, you're going to rely on Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, who, ain't been even, who hasn't been able to take us down? You're going to rely on these guys? They can't get the job done. So what does that mean by Solo saying that? Roman Reigns, of all people, going to do something that Kevin Owens and Randy Orton couldn't do. Help Cody Rose put the bloodline behind him. And that's going to make Randy Orton and Kevin Owens feel some type of way. They're already probably not too happy that he's teamed with Roman, but Roman is going to Help him put the bloodline behind him. I don't know who's going to turn first, but Kevin Owens is going to give Cody Rose a stunner or we're going to get a RKO out of nowhere in the coming weeks. And that's how you know that Roman and Cody are winning. Because why would the bloodline win? That, that, so that means why would Kevin Owens and Kev, uh, Randy Orton turn heel or betray Cody, whatever you want to call it, Right? So Cody Rose and Roman Reigns gonna win, um, and that could set up a Cody solo. I mean, a Roman solo, because you know that match needs to happen because Roman still needs to get his Ufala back. So 
I predict Cody Roman winning. So that's what I have. There's going to be a return because that's the main event. Like I said, it's Paul Heyman, Jimmy Uso, or The Rock, or another member of the uh, – well, I guess it wouldn't be a – if I'm predicting Cody winning, there wouldn't be a new Bloodline member coming. So it's either The Rock, Jimmy, but I guess Jimmy will come and help Roman – and Cody defeat the new bloodline, right? It only makes sense for Jimmy or Paul Heyman to come back. I mean, The Rock could come back, but then how does that play out, right? So it's probably going to be a Jimmy Uso return or Paul Heyman. So those are my match predictions. I got Roman and Cody Rose. I got uh, Nia Jax retaining. I got Liv Morgan retaining. I got Dang, I done lost my matches. Oh, I got CM Punk winning and I got Damian Priest winning. Very, very predictable card, Triple H. I mean, and I don't know. The only surprise that Triple H can do really is have Bailey win and, and Tiffany cash in. That's only like, oh my God, that's a surprise. Oh my gosh, excuse me, I hate to say the Lord's name in vain. Oh my gosh, that's a surprise. That's the only thing you can really do. And that would suck because I don't think Tiffany's quite ready. And I don't think that's fair to Nia Jackson have a barely over a month title reign. So those are my predictions. Let me know what you think. I will do a video on the match results. And until then, Pro Wrestling World, peace out.